everybody. I want to show you my craft room slash office from work. <laughs> it's all, it's only changed a little. My craft space is still very nice and open. The only thing that changed is my sewing desk. So when I'm working, the sewing machine is pushed back into the corner and the monitor and all that are brought forward and I hook everything up to my laptop and that's where I work. And then when I want to sew, I just push things around and I can sew again. So try not to go too fast. And I'm gonna do a journaling slash chatting video. So yesterday when I did this, I put my phone up on where I always put it, right here. And I push the record button because I'm so used to putting it up there and pushing the record button, forgetting <laughs> that it was already on record. <laughs> and um, so you guys know what happened then. It didn't record. And I'm pretty sure I talked for a complete hour <laughs> chatting while I glued these pages in to my journal for the next three months. And I'm almost done. <laughs> and I chatted the entire time because it was a chatting video. And yeah, that wasn't very smart. <laughs> and then I got done and I'm like, oh no. <laughs> I only recorded one minute. <laughs> it was so, so sad, you guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. What are you going to do, right? Oh. You just, you know, you just don't know. It's, it's crazy. Anyway, such is life, right? Not a lot you can do. So I'm going to finish, I'm going to decorate three pages in here. And then I'm going to keep setting up the rest, <coughs> excuse me, of my journal there. And chat with you guys, because... <laughs> That's what I wanted to do, and um, we'll see how long this goes. I um, don't know that I'll chat as long as I chatted last time because I was really trying to stretch out the time uh, when I was chatting before. So I just want to pull some things forward that I want to decorate with and my washi and all that stuff and some scissors, and then I think... I am ready to go. So, let's see. I this so I remember. I have things that I just forget to use uh, when I'm decorating. And so, I want to be sure and use these. And my other stickers, because I never know exactly what I'm going to need until I start doing it. So the three days I'm gonna do, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So Wednesday was cloudy, kinda off and on rain all day. It did get up to 46. And I got up at 4.30, um, since I couldn't, oh, I'm tired. So I couldn't sleep longer. Um, and I try to get up now, I don't have my alarm on because I'm home anyway, and I try to, um, to at least sleep as long as Doug does, and he gets up at 5.45 so that I can actually get a good, good more hours of sleep, but anyway. But I had breakfast, watched some of the national news um, after he went to work, and then I did a journaling YouTube, watched a couple watercolor YouTubes. I was still at the point where I was working um, in the morning, and, or at home in the morning and working in the afternoon, so I didn't have to do anything but keep my eye on emails and answer any that were important before I would come in at noon, so that's all I was doing. So then um, I had talked to, and I wanted to talk about this, I had um, gone in, if you remember, I, I had keep cut, getting, I was getting these little it, itchy red spots that looked like bites. Um, they were red and they did look like, they really looked like bites. And it all started back in July when I went um, 
to a family reunion at a lake and I was in the lake quite a bit and I got all kinds of bites. There was something in the lake and I got lots of bites and um, and then I kept getting bites even though I wasn't there anymore for um, two months. I kept getting the red spots and they were itchy and they would just pop up and sometimes they would hurt a little before they showed and I just couldn't figure out what was going on but I knew I wasn't getting bit anymore um, so why was that happening and um, I went to a dermatologist and she um, put me on a cortisone cream and that didn't really help and so then she put me on a stronger uh, cortisone gel and she put me, uh, gave me a prescription for, um, can't remember what it, what it is, but anyway, she gave me a prescription, <clears throat> doxycycline. So she gave me that prescription right before I went on vacation. And since I was going to be out in the sun and it makes you sensitive to the sun, I didn't want to take it until vacation was over. So I went on vacation in September and the first day after the second day of vacation, the spots quit and they never came back. And so uh, I never took the doxycycline and, and the spots went away. And then in January, December, January, my mother-in-law gave me a cashmere scarf. And so I started wearing it. Um, and in January, I started getting like itchiness on my face. It would just get red in my neck and it was just itchy and red. And <clears throat> I then remembered that back when I was 13 or 14, I discovered I had an allergic reaction to fine wool, not real wood, but fine wool. And um, I figured that was it. So I had to take that off, um, not use that anymore. And, um, and then the fading, the redness and the itchiness quit, but then I started getting those spots again. So my dermatologist had said back in July that every time I got, that the original spots triggered this to keep recurring and every time I got more, it would trigger more. So they were trying to suppress that uh, immune reaction or whatever, uh, that reaction, that autoimmune reaction. And um, so I got them again and I switched dermatologists and uh, and she had, the one I had picked happened to be free and the one I had before was not free, uh, as in schedule wise. And I went to her and I, I, and this was after I took the doxycycline for the whole 30 days and it didn't help. And uh, she gave me another stronger steroid cream and she did a biopsy. Um, and she just did one right here because um, I had <clears throat> I had just like five new bite bites in quotation marks there. So she gave me uh, a stronger cream and, and she sent this in. And that was about three weeks ago. And I got the report back and she said um, it's showing up as bites. Um, well, I read the lab report and it said that it looked like it had the markings of bug insect bites of some kind, like fleas or whatever. So we we did a big cleaning check. The, the hamster didn't have any fleas or mites or anything, but we still cleaned as if that was the case. And and then I read the lab report closer, and it said that there was an indication that there might be two autoimmune, possibly two autoimmune. Um, diseases. So I went back to her while well, I emailed her because now at this point we couldn't really go in and uh, with the virus. So I emailed her and I said, um, I said there's no bites. There's, or there's. I said they're showing up. I said, but there's no nothing. I don't see anything. My husband has not ever got ever gotten bit. The hamster doesn't have anything. I said, could you please look into this further because the lab reports mention the possibility of autoimmune disease and um, and I already have an autoimmune disease. I have Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid hypothyroid disorder. And um, I said, I already have this, so it's po is it possible I have something else too? 
So she finally agreed. So I went, so Wednesday, <laughs> I went into the Park Nicollet Clinic near us and they took a whole bunch of blood so that they could um, check and see. And then um, yesterday, uh, all the tests came back. I see them because I'm in the health partner system. So I see all the test results. I looked at them. I was in the normal range pretty much for everything. And so she had her nurse call me yesterday and she said that um, all my tests were in the normal range, but one test showed a marker uh, for inflammation. And that she, and also I had told her I had been taking antihistamines and it seemed to be helping when I talked to her. And she said, based on the fact that the antihistamines helped, um, that she was gonna pretty much diagnose it as one of those autoimmune diseases, and it's the or, or uticarial vasculitis, and it's the less severe one. The more severe, they're both rare, but the more severe one affects your organs the, and your skin, and the less severe one affects your skin. And I did some searching and it seems that there might be, there's a correlation between having Hashimoto's and then getting uh, this uticarial vasculitis. So the nurse told me to keep taking the antihistamines but double the dose for two weeks. And, um, and now my bites have actually been gone for, I haven't had any new bites for about five days, I think. Um, so I'm really hoping they're gone. But then she said that she made an appointment for me and there were only two time slots left in May, so I have an appointment on May 28th. But you know what? I felt so much relief after hearing a diagnosis finally because, you know, she kept saying, oh, it's bug bites, it's bug bites. And, and I was just like, it can't be bug bites. Like, please listen to me. <laughs> I have Hashimoto's. This stuff is triggered by other bites or allergy, re allergic reactions. You know, it has to be something else. And thank goodness, you know, I just thank God she listened to me and checked it further. And so just having a diagnosis just helps my whole frame of mind about this. Um, I don't like the fact that I have another autoimmune disease, but um, hopefully we can keep this one under control. Uh, there's no cure for it, and there's times of relapse and remission, so I hope to be in remission from it for a while because it's awful. Because it, it's so itchy. It burns a little before they start. It's super itchy, and I usually have some discoloration where the bite was for a while after it disappears, after the bites disappear. Um, and... Um, so, but anyway, it was a relief. But now my husband's even more strict than ever because he was like, you can't go anywhere because you might get that virus and you already have an autoimmune disorder. Now you have another one. So you're at risk, you know, even if they're, to me, they're minor autoimmune disorders, but that's just me. And anyway, I am staying home for the most part, but we will go for walks and stuff like that. We're not gonna like do absolutely nothing. So just no stores and around people and things like that. Anyway, so that was my Wednesday and my Friday. And, and then the Minnesota, oh, I stopped at Starbucks and got a scone and a coffee because I thought, you know what? I'm pretty sure that pretty soon the governor of Minnesota is going to put us on lockdown and I am going to get my last, um, I'm going to just use the money I have left on my card and get my free bakery item and my drink. And I did that, so I only got 17 cents left on the card, so that was good. And I do like to pull these things off of these because the thickness, you know, I, I'm putting things in my journal, they really have to be thin. So I pull this corrugated stuff off so that it's nice and thin. So I did that um, and then uh, went to work and 
and the governor spoke at two o'clock and announced that there would be a lockdown for two weeks starting at midnight on Friday. Now our business um, can remain open. We are considered um, essential because uh, we we provide the supplies for our franchisees who do repair repairs and cleaning in the automotive industry. So we are, because of that, we are considered to be um, essential. But um, two of our guys, there's only nine of us in the home office and two or 10, 10 of us. One guy is 91 and he's with his family in North Dakota right now, which is good where he should be and the two younger guys who are in their early 20s decided they didn't want to risk their health so they had already stopped coming so they're just like on a leave at this moment so that left six wait seven people in the office and then when the whole school thing happened our chemist had to start working from home because they have two toddlers and she's a, like a special ed teacher so he has to be home to take, help take care of the kids when she's doing the school thing. And um, so then we were down to six people in the office. And um, I'm gonna cut this out. So we were just trying to decide what to do, and Mandy and I were already both working half days uh, because of this. She was working in the, and things had slowed down. So she was working in the morning, I was working afternoons. So she told me if we could get, if we could finally get our remote access up, that I could just work from home the whole time, full time, for the two weeks. And um, so we did get it working on third, on Thursday thankfully finally it took forever just to you know get to that point so I was really glad about that and um, truly glad about that and so Wednesday um, after work Doug stopped at Aldi's for a couple groceries that we still needed. The, the, the governor's been speaking every day around two and the White House usually comes on every day and speaks around 4.30, 5 o'clock. So the president and such were speaking at five and after that we had supper. We had grilled pork, potatoes, and tomatoes. And we watched the news. And then um, on Wednesdays, we both have Zoom meetings through church stuff. Doug has the man, his men's group meets via Zoom now, because that's the only way they can meet once a week. Or they do Google Hangouts, actually. Google, yeah, Google Hangouts. And I'm meeting once a week by Zoom with the women I was like five of the women I was really good friends with from my other church and they've been meeting so they invited me which was really really sweet of them so I do that for like an hour and Doug's meeting is probably like an hour and a half and then Tuesdays I meet with my sisterhood ladies and there's about well there's 10 of us total for that but not everybody comes to the meeting <clears throat> um, so we did that and then when Doug was done with his, we watched Heartland. Um, and then before going to bed. So that was nice. That was a, a good day. Um, let's see. Here we go. Let's do these cute little guys. All right. Okay. There. All right, and then we just need a little bit more. 
Maybe I'll put an owl, some more owl right here. like I need to go over here and just do a little bit, a little bit of a trim. Okay. Nice. And then it looks like I just need something up here. Um, maybe just this little cafeteria sign it would be sufficient up here I think there we go all right so Thursday Thursday um, I watched well I kept an eye on my email in the morning I watched a watercolor YouTube did a little watercolor and then I went to work a little early because I knew that this was probably gonna be my last day in the office for two weeks and out and about so I went early and did my Pokemon Go and got as many gym battles in as I could and just got like did a whole bunch and then um, they got my remote access working so yay that was good news because I brought home a monitor a keyboard and a mouse and then Rachel gave me the cable I needed and I hook it up to my Mac and it is so easy to switch between my work computer and my personal stuff on my laptop it's just super easy it really worked well I set up so that all the, during business hours, all the phone calls go to my cell phone and I can transfer them to the different people. Even though I'm not in the office, it's just amazing to me. And I can check my, my voicemails, so it's really great. Um, so I went home, um, after Doug got home, we did do one outing, um, even though he doesn't want me to, we did do an outing. That was before he knew about the second diagnosis. But we went, um, we went to, ooh, I'm gonna pull this off of here. We went to Aldi and we had an opportunity to help a senior living apartments complex that, that they were running out of food um, and like just weren't able to find some basic things. Like, protein and paper supplies and fr produce, fresh produce. So uh, all the sisterhood ladies were called to participate and um, people especially who are on, signed up to be do care for others. Um, and so we went and picked up some meat and cheese and peanut butter and peanuts and some produce. Um, and a few canned things and eggs and took that over and there was so much stuff that they showed us a picture of like the living a sitting room area at the nursing at this apartments and it was so full and they said okay now we have more than we need thank you very much but now don't don't do any more so <laughs> it was, that was such a blessing to be able to do that it really it really was so I'm going to do, let's see, these were those cutouts a friend of mine sent me for during the quarantine, all the coffee, which reminds me I needed a second cup of coffee pretty soon. I had my, my first already, but I do need another cup for sure. Um, anyway, so... So we did that and we drove out to the house and dropped it up in the garage and then we came home and we had picked up a cauliflower crust pizza so we had the pizza and we watched an episode of Jack Ryan on Prime Video and then after that we watched um, an episode of Heartland. And then I just relaxed and read until it was time for bed. My usual Thursday activities. <laughs> nothing nothing major going on, no meetings or anything like that. Um, so 
Let me put a couple of these on. Well, it's going to be different being at home. For one thing, I'm not really going to have any much of any ephemera, am I? That much I know. <sighs> and I had ordered some stuff on Amazon for journaling and such, and all that came. My, I got my ink cartridges for my fountain pens, and I got some more of these hitch post fasteners, hitch fasteners. Um, I only had one left, and when I'm doing regular junk journals, these are the ones that I need. So those came, and I'm all good now. I, I don't have to worry. I'm not, I've got what I need, so I'm, I'm glad about that. Um, we're going to take this one. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. So, um, yeah, life's a little different now, you know? I'm so thankful that I can work from home and that I do have a job, and my heart just goes out to everybody who has lost jobs and just a tough time financially. I know, it, it's scary. And I, um, I'm going to use this blue. My husband works at a university doing maintenance, residential maintenance, so they still are working. So I'm thankful for that, as long as the college can, the university can afford to pay them. Uh, it's a private university, then um, hopefully they should continue to um, have jobs. But only 40 hours, of course. They can't work any extra, no overtime at all. Um, they just have to, just their 40 hours, so they have to really watch their time. So he does get home, even if they're doing, like, where they usually get paid extra, like when they're on call, which my husband will be next week, they just regular, they just have to count the hours so that they don't go over 40. So he'll come home, comes home a little earlier on Fridays if he's, like, made up made up his time so hmm, let's put that up here instead so that's kind of how that is working out here um but we're just thankful that he's working because you know Depending on how long this goes, I don't know what it's going to do for the college and how long they'll be able to even keep it up. Um, I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of businesses that are going to have, you know, struggles because of all of this. And it's not, it's not easy. And, um... I just pray we can, you know, we can make it through. It's going to be it's just, you know, I don't know. Whew, it's windy out there. Today's going to be a rainy, rainy day. My husband's out walking or doing geocaching right now and the rain has stopped so hopefully he can do that before it starts raining again because once it's like in the afternoon it's just supposed to be quite rainy so I wanted to put a sticker over here um, so yeah, it could be an interesting day. I don't know if we're if it's all rainy and everything, we're not gonna get our walk in um, today. But we'll just see what happens. I don't actually know what we're gonna do, you know, today. I mean, I did laundry, 
Yesterday I dusted, so I didn't have to do that today, but I did laundry and, um, this is so cute. And that's all the cleaning I, that I don't have to do any other cleaning, so I'm glad about that. And I can just do um, different things. So I'll probably work on journals, and I'm definitely going to be working on watercolors because um, today. And my daughter and I are going to do a FaceTime while we work on art. So we're just going to chat with each other and uh, do art art stuff at the same time. <laughs> so that's our, that's kind of our plan for today. All right, so I just have this one little spot to put something. So let me look what would be fun. or just nice. I just want a picture, something to, I think I'm gonna use an Allie Brown printable, like this one. Journaling is cheap therapy, use it often. I really like that. So let's just tear um, this part right here. Um, it looks like I need to tear it a little bit more. I want okay so now that fits so now I have to trim a little bit so it fits right here there I like that journaling is cheap therapy use it often you know what journaling is therapy that's what I do I journal so that I can journal my feelings and thoughts about everything that's going on and it really helps a lot. It just, it makes a difference. I don't care what anybody says, it makes a difference. So I think it's a good, a good thing. It's one of the things I'm really doing during this time. And Friday, well, there was a dermatology diagnosis. So this was my first day working from home and actually not very much because we've decided that we're closing the office is basically on Friday. So I am gonna let the phone come to me from eight to 10 and then it's off um, just in case there's some calls first thing in the morning. And I'll check my emails periodically, but not, that's about it. But I did do some work this Friday since it was the first one I wanted to make sure everything was going smoothly and then when I wasn't working I was sewing my junk journals I had pasoli for lunch and then I called my mother-in-law and we had a nice chat on the phone it was really good to talk to her I'm just calling her once a week and then um, <clears throat> The governor had a press conference at two, and then I did this journaling chat, chatting YouTube, which failed to record. My fault, user error. And Doug came out early, so we went and picked up our cooler from when we had dropped food off yesterday. And then we picked up a movie, 1917, which was really good. Very tense. So after we watched that, I we watched Heartland and then I read before bed, but we had the pizza for supper and then we bought these shamrock, no, we didn't have pizza for supper. We had we had this bag of uh, almost like a stir fry, chicken stir fry thing, uh, but not exactly stir fry. It's just some kind of meal because it had some noodles and veggies and chicken and I wish it had a sauce with it because we were really disappointed. And then we had the shamrock Oreo McFlurries from McDonald's and we were super disappointed. It was not good. There was so much green food color or the coloring they use on top and were in it. It was it was really bad. We're never doing that again. So that was kind of interesting. Supper was not exactly fun or good or anything like that. It was ugh, just bad. It was bad. So let's see, I want to put down some washi. What color do I want? 
think I'm going to use this one because I think it will look good against that page. Yeah, so that was our Friday. Um, it's a good, it was good as far as relaxing, you know. Um, I feel like I was able to do quite a bit, so that that is always makes me happy. If I can accomplish some things. Oh, oh goodness gracious, come on. rearrange my little washi box here it's a little bit a little bit crazy seems like if one washi starts falling they all like don't cooperate at all okay there we go so now I just need a sticker here I think either a sticker or I just kind of like this Maybe I'll just do this, and then I can take off what I don't need. Yeah, perfect, like that. A little decoration, let's get that on here. I can't believe the month is almost over, it is crazy. but my insert will be ready. I'm gonna <clears throat> finish getting that, getting that ready. I like this, I think this looks nice here and I'll just put a little sticker down there. And that should be good. Figure out everything I wanna do. So let's see what I have for a sticker. I think I'll put one of these little guys down again, like right there. Okay, so now I just have this long thing to do. So let me look at my bigger stickers, and that means I shouldn't need glue or scissors anymore for what I have left here. So I'll just look at these and see if there's something I can use in here. I am trying to use these up. So I think I will do this. I'm gonna put this up arrow. And then I'm going to put some stickers down and put some phrases or words on top of them. So I'm going to put this one here. So we'll just make a little design with this and see, see how that works. Uh, where's that other arrow? There it is. I know I had another arrow. Uh, tearing my, I'm tearing my arrow. <laughs> and then this one, so we'll put this one up here and this one here, okay? And then I'm gonna put two word phrases on these. Um, oh, I have some black ones. I think black will stand out. Um, how about, choose to shine and do your best. Good advice for times like these, right, you guys? <sighs> Um, I'm just going to see if there was something else. Two more things. 
I want to put on here. Um, I'm going to put Be Brave on this one and Stay Strong on this one. There. I like that. So there we go. Three days done. All right. So I'm going to pop this back in here. Maybe I'll leave it out so I can take the pictures later. And since it is a chatting video and I really want to get this, this done, I am going to do this. So we are at 40 minutes. I don't want to go over an hour, but I think I can get this done. So uh, what are you guys doing during this time? Are you doing some extra crafting that maybe you don't do uh, during regular times? You know, are you taking advantage if you're home? Like, are you home now more than you were before? And so what are you doing? Do you have like a stash of craft things that you're using up and doing things you put off for a long time or just haven't had time to do. Um, I love this since I'm talking to you about this because look at here's a pencil, art supplies, uh, paintbrush, and it says promise yourself that today you'll create and be awesome in motion. So it's Saturday guys. So isn't this a good day to put that into practice? Create and be awesome in motion. I'm gonna spend my day mostly crafting and doing stuff like that. Um, I enjoy that and this is a good day to do it because even though I lazed around a bit in the morning, which is fine too, I have plenty of time to create today. So I am definitely planning to do some creating because why not right that's what I think okay come on we could do this there we go a little wrinkly but we'll just flatten that out Let's turn this other side. And especially, I want to spend some time painting this weekend because I don't feel like I've gotten as much painting time in as I would like. Um, and I want to work on the journals, of course. That's another big uh, thing I've been doing. And I've got, I've been, I've had to put all the journals together. I didn't realize that I didn't have them all together and then I added extra pages uh, from the Daphne's diary stuff I had left over so I added four pages to everything and I had to cut those all to shape and then I had to actually put the papers in order so that took a while because um, I had 27 journals I'm doing and then um, all the pockets and tucks and belly bands are all cut out so I started sewing them in and I've got four um, sewn in. So now um, I'm going to just keep doing that. I'm trying to do more of a assembly line thing. So once all the belly bands and things are sewn in all the journals, I'm going to um, sew them together. Well, no, I got to sew lace on. I'm going to sew some lace on the back the first page, edge of the first page and the edge of the last page to match the cover. And then I'm going to sew it all together. And then I'll make it like some, I'm going to do, I think, some kind of tie system to tie it closed. Maybe, I haven't totally decided. And then I'm going to decorate the cover for the person I'm sending it to. I have a list of people some other people of mine that I just want to gift these to that have been really good supporters uh, of me with their comments and everything. And um, I know from the journaling community, um, there's a lot of people that I'd really interact with more. 
and um, there's some I had already promised a year ago practically to do this for them and it's taken me this long to actually start doing it again it kind of kind of got in a funk and now I'm I'm getting excited about sewing and making junk journals again and I'm really looking forward to doing um, my junk journals for the store that will be fun I do enjoy doing that and it, but it's been so long like I said I just got into a funk so starting with these Daphne's diary inspired junk journals has really helped me kind of get back into it and I'm enjoy enjoying it enjoying the sewing part enjoying picking what's gonna look good together so I am really um, glad that I just feel like um, I'm, I'm getting someplace you know with this which is good <laughs> I needed to. That's for sure. I guess having this, you know, it's just a tiny silver lining in the middle of all this uncertainty that is going on. And I think we need silver linings. It doesn't mean we're ignoring the problem and what's going, the awfulness of this virus and going and what's going on. But we can see bright spots if we choose to. There can be some bright spots. So that's kind of what I'm going on. So my sister lives in Tucson. And as of to today, they are on lockdown. Just Tucson, she said, in all of Arizona. I'm not sure why I haven't caught anything about that on the news yet. But this is her fourth day of being sick, and she doesn't know if she has a flu or a virus. Um, she's not sure what's going on, but she's sick. Uh, four days, she has headaches, fevers, cough, and chest congestion, and a little out of breath. And I'm like, that sounds like it could be the virus. I said, please take care of yourself, keep an eye on this, and go see the doctor if it gets worse. So she says it hasn't gotten worse yet, um, and I'm praying that it doesn't. I pray it's not the virus, or if it is, that it's just a more mild form. But um, she's the only one of my family that I've heard that they've been sick at all. So I'm just praying that it's okay. Cause, and they've been really careful about quarantine, like self quarantining themselves and trying to be careful and, and not be around people. Cause they, they both work from home. So it's not like they need to be out and about. Um, So hopefully, right, I'm just going to like hope for the best at this point and pray for her health and that she gets better. But I was thinking about, you know, um, like I do certain things that help me cope with the uncertainty of all of this because it is, I mean, no matter what you say, it's still uncertain times. It's still a little scary, no matter what. And if you're sick, it's probably even more so, um, depending on where you are in the world too, as well, it's more so. So I just, um, I have my coping mechanisms, you know. I'm generally a calm person, but I have experienced anxiety and, uncertainty and some fear through this but I have I cope through my relationship with God through my faith so every morning I get up and I have a what I call a quiet time with God I pray I read a couple devotionals I read the Bible and I do it with the salt message 
which is scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So I read a couple chapters a day. I observe, make some observations about a couple of passages that stick out to me. I apply that to my life and I pray it. And then I list a, a spiritual gratitude, like a gratitude to God for something. And then, um, and I journal that. And then after that time, I have a journal where I just write a traveler's notebook journal of course, <laughs> and a fountain pen where I write um, down what I'm feeling, what's going on is related to this virus and what I'm feeling. I also write down any quotes or prayers or scriptures that help me through this time. I write, or songs even, I write those down and um, really that time, because whenever I listen to the news and I listen to the press conferences, and I don't listen all day long or a lot, but I do try to listen to the press conferences and a little bit of the national news. So whenever I do that, then anxiousness starts to creep in, you know? And so I have to battle the anxiousness and that uh, fear, uncertainty. Is my husband's job going to be safe? How are we going to make it if he doesn't? You know, there's so many things. But I just keep going back to God and putting my confidence and trust in Him. I know that no matter what does happen, that He is with me. I'm not alone. And, um, and I'm also being braver about sharing things. So I share this stuff on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I've started, as you know, putting my Bible journaling videos on this channel as well, just because I feel like it can reach a bigger audience and help people. And that's what I want, is to just share the scriptures that are helping me through this time. So how do you, guys, how do you cope? Um, I really believe journaling is a huge, huge coping mechanism. But how do you, how are you coping? Are you, are you having some fears and uncertainties and stress and tension and worries, anxiety? Like, how do you cope with that? What are your coping mechanisms um, to get you, to get you through this time that can be difficult? But have something. Okay, um, stop doing things that, like if there's certain things, like listening to too much news or scrolling through things or reading articles that are giving you anxiety, try to stop them or at least minimize how much you're doing that and um, start doing some things, you know, that will help you. And also you can do try to do things that help others. That makes a huge difference too. Just like trying to reach out to those who are in need during this time and, and doing what you can. Like I like to, I've been able to do some actual physical stuff to help people, but um, I've really been able to do a lot on social media and YouTube and that's, that is where I'm really seeing, uh, in a sense, where God can use me to to help and encourage, because I, I do want to do that. And it and it's okay to admit that you're having struggles. You don't need to be strong for anybody, really. Um, you know, you don't. Let's put this here. I'm almost done. <laughs> I think I'm almost through this, another glue stick too, but this does take a lot of glue. So once I get this finished, I will be done, and I'm probably very, very close to that hour time frame now, if not over it, but I am determined to finish this before I stop this video. And I'm almost there. A couple more days, and then we will be all ready for the new next three months to start and I hope they are good ones. I am, boy, wow. This actually turned out 
perfect because I was a little bit worried how we were going to end up with this, but it looks like I have a two page spread for every single day, which is what I was hoping for. And just, just because I didn't count it. Um, so I wasn't, I'm not, was not sure about that happening, but yes. Oh, and I even have an extra page. <laughs> wow, amazing. How did that happen? I will take it. So good. So if I ever have a month with two, like a three year period with two of 31 days or whatever, or I can, I'm okay and it will work. Ugh. Oh my gosh, I got glue everywhere. It's probably good that I'm done. All right, there we go. It is completed. That is so great. And now I can work on other things like I need to and maybe get this glue off my hands. So yeah, the only thing I haven't done is um, this opening page here. And I will get that. But it's good to have this month all ready to go. And I think I'm just going to put this band around it to hold it closed. Got the cute band from a friend of mine. It's really nice. Whew. Well, what a mess. So much glue on my fingers. <laughs> I will go clean that off with some soup. But yes, thanks so much for joining me um, as I worked on this. I'm super excited about getting started on a new insert. And really, I've been trying to be really careful and about how much I put in. And yeah, it's thick, but it's really, um, I think it's not too thick. So I'm, I'm really happy that I can get um, three months into one of these and it looks like I didn't write um I didn't put <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> January March April here so I should have done that um so that's something I need to go back and and put on the cover so I know what the months are and I actually didn't package tape this either but we only have like a couple of minutes before the hour but you know what let me see let me see if I have a January. I do. Where is it? January, February. Yep, I do. January, February, March. I want to be sure and do that. So let's put those in. January. Oops, come on. I might as well do that before we finish up. So, January. February. And where's my March? March. Come on. Come on, you can do it. <laughs> And March, put March right there. January, February, March. And then we need 2020. So let's see, do I have a 2020 yet? I've kind of used all those up. So here's a 20. And a two. And do I have a zero? Zero. I don't, but I think I can do, I'm just trying to find uh, a new ways I can make this work. So let's try it this way. So we're gonna go right here, 20, and then I'm gonna put the 10 right here but I'm gonna put the two over the one. 
there we go. 2020, a little weird, but it works. And then I probably should stick some packaging tape over this. I don't want it to like come apart on like the letters, these things to like fall off. So let's just do right here at the edge. Doesn't have to cover the whole thing. And then we'll just do a little more to get this one. All right, there we go. I think that's sufficient. Okay, we're done. Thanks so much for watching everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye. Oh, and one minute and 38 seconds.